All right. Uh, I had a lot of uh, questions about throwing, throwing people. Okay, and you know we we played around with cow tipping, and now now we're into the dig. You know we're we're digging digging a guy out. Simpler. But I want to talk to you about throwing somebody versus tearing somebody. Okay, when we started playing around with torque, we realized that one arm, you know, the, the old D-line thing, one arm was longer uh, than two, but we also realized that if we used our torquing muscles in the trunk, one arm was actually stronger than two. Or two, we could either push or flip. Here we would we would be able to really torque somebody, torque somebody. So we started playing around with throwing, and you know I, I probably haven't clarified this as much as I should. Throwing is good if I'm draw setting or pass protecting, but when I throw in a run game, when I throw a guy to the side. I've uncovered him, and I'm forcing the back to go behind me. Uh, we, yeah, we drilled throwing, and, and it was really good. But tearing, I can keep him covered. I can keep him in front of me, covered. Okay, one arm in the armpit or underneath the pads or wherever you can get him. Uh, you know, some people club. I, I don't like it because it see what it does to me. It, it exposes my chest. The NFL guys club all the time, I see it. But when you throw, you're throwing the man out. Plus, here's another thing. If you don't get a good throw, he'll break the arm and sling you and come back across your face. But when you tear him, you've got him grabbed here. Okay, so if he slings you, you just hang on to him. Okay? And the way, that the, the, the big trick of the tear, and I tried doing it, I tried doing one-hand tears at Ball State. I got a confession to make. I was allowed to play around with it, anything I wanted to at a lot of places. And I'd get questioned at times, but for the most part, they let me do whatever the hell I wanted to do. And some of it was good and some of it wasn't. But well, what our best way of teaching the tear was to make a four-legged animal, you know, tie up with your partner and work that tear and the, the original demonstration was I would make these kids get into a four-legged animal, you know, me versus my, my opponent. We'd start straining, and then a third guy would come over and hammer him. And it wasn't, we didn't have to do it from the line of scrimmage, we didn't have to do it from stances. We would just connect into a four-legged animal. You know, I'd be, I'd be fighting him, he'd be fighting me. I'd get him in the armpit, I'd get him under under the peck or maybe in both armpits or wherever I got him and the, and the third guy would come over and he would just hammer him. And we hammer with long arms and you know some of that force that we exert but we don't want to get caught hammering like this. We wanted to be locked out and use the avalanche idea Okay, and, he, and we would close the leg Sometimes we'd open the leg to shuffle and then hammer. Or when we did the cow tip stuff, we'd skip and hammer. The skip step allowed us to adjust the second step. Okay, so whatever was happening was happening. But that's the way we would teach tear. We'd be straining, my partner would be fighting me, I'd be trying to tear him out, and all of a sudden the third guy would come and woof! guy would go flying. When you throw a guy, if he falls on the ground, it clogs, it clogs stuff up. Plus, you might throw him on your buddy. You want to do that. Keep him up. Don't let him fall. Don't make piles. Let the back run where he wants to run. And if the back only sees that, you as the blocker, he's happy. If he sees a defender, he's going to go the other way. It's just the way it is. Sometimes he goes the other way, gets blown up. So, yeah, I apologize for all the experimental videos. They're out there. I got like, I think there's a hundred and 
something that are posted, and there's another 50 that I that I didn't like, and I tur took off the internet. So that's what it is. Okay. Have fun. Tear.